and uh, thank you for inviting me. This is a special conference in the name of a special person, a very special person, whose passing away will be sorely missed. And I think her presence was actually needed in the current uh, uh, circumstances uh, and the chaos that we have right now. She would have been the uh, saner voice. Uh, I, I also personally miss her sorely. Uh, my, the panelists will be speaking about the uh, facts and the, uh, will, will perhaps allude to the intergovernmental panel on climate change uh, reports that have come out of the United Nations and many such reports. Uh, but I will here only talk about uh, the little contribution that uh, I have been making uh, for the past more than three years now. This is uh, mostly uh, confined to Lahore, uh, but it's gradually being expanded to the entire province. But firstly, two aphorisms. Uh, one by Jonathan Miller, who said that you are not responsible for the past, but in so far as you can do nothing, you are complicit in the present created by it. So we need to do something, otherwise we'll be complicit in uh, the present that we create and the future that beckons us. Our constitution is a social compact between the state and the people. It contains rights which the state is under obligation to enforce and a failure to do so spawns right-based environmental litigation. We may refer to the various provisions in the Constitution which give rise to such rights to inherit in the people of Pakistan and for which the state is obligated to take real and immediate measures so that climate crisis can be averted in all its manifestations. I can refer to Article 3 of the Constitution which requires the state to ensure elimination of all forms of exploitation and the gradual fulfillment of the fundamental principle that is from each according to his ability to each according to his work. There's a plethora of precedents which have given an expansive view of the term life as used in Article 9 of the Constitution, which clearly includes life which is free from hazards caused by the environmental pollution in order to nurture healthy and robust life for the people of Pakistan. Article 38 is one of the principles of policy which inter alia obligates the state to secure the well-being of the people, to provide basic necessities of life, such as food, clothing, etc. But I will be, as I said in the beginning, talking about an aspect which is now called uh, climate justice. And uh, this has been going on uh, in a number of countries. It is also a recent phenomena in Pakistan. But uh, you can find more about this in an Asian Development Bank uh, booklet. They have compiled a report series of four reports where they have uh, uh, you know, uh, encompassed the various climate litigations taking place in Asia and the uh, they, where the courts have taken charge of certain issues uh, where the people have been denied their rights to climate change uh, because of climate change. Uh, we have so many uh, judgments uh, which have been passed and uh, which I would say uh, you know, lay down or refer to certain treaties, conventions, international conventions, but they do nothing more. They are just judgments. I would say they are like paintings to be looked at and nothing more. Uh, when we embarked upon this uh, litigation uh, in 2019, we thought that something more must be done. We've had judgments which are to be looked at, but we need some action now. Uh, we cannot just sit idly, render judgments, and like consultants reports and then do nothing about it. Uh, and this is a phenomena which I will tell you briefly, uh, which is now going on throughout the world. It has been variously defined. Uh, for example, it, de it is defined as engagement orders in Canada and New, New Zealand. 
uh, judicial directives in South Africa and Indian Supreme Courts, supervisory jurisdictions, which means that report back to the court. I would call the action that we have taken as judicial review in action. Uh, this is uh, entitled Haroon Farooq uh, versus Government of Punjab. It was uh, initiated in 2018. It was brought by a public spirited individual as a social action petition. And uh, so I seize the opportunity of uh, not, you know, deciding something, disposing of the petition, but keeping it pending, directing, issuing directions to the government to report back to the court. And we have made significant strides. Uh, not many people perhaps know about this, but the work which is being carried out on the ground is enormous, and I'll just tell you briefly about it. In order to address the adverse impacts associated with global warming, a key globe, a goal of climate justice is to put across the effects of mitigation and adaptation in order to promote greater climate equity. A large number of judicial directions in this case relate to mitigation and adaptation measures, particularly those aimed at water conservation, climate change and genders adaptation needs, which in turn feeds adaptation policies and options which can reduce risks to natural ecosystems by its restoration to health, livelihoods, food and water with efficient irrigation, green infrastructure, sustainable land use and water management. Thus the twin themes of mitigation and adaptation have to be at the heart of any climate litigation. So judicial directives were issued on which executives were re required to report back to the court. Uh, in order to achieve this and to represent this court on the ground, a water commission was set up. I'll introduce the members of the commission who are present here today. They are at the vanguard of this uh, entire uh, 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 thing that we have. The, in order to, uh, so a water commission was uh, set up. The singular object was the attainment of water justice in motion. Since its establishment, the water commission which was later designated as the Water and Environment Commission, has compiled over 100 reports which form part of the record. The function of the commission has been unique and takes a paradigm shift from the previously appointed commissions. This court, I sitting as the court, issue directions on those reports. And I'll now take you quickly because uh, this positive of time, I cannot, you know, uh, delve into a broader scheme of what we have in the litigation, but I'll just briefly take you through the steps which have been achieved on the ground. Firstly, the Commission ensured the installation of 73 large and medium scale treatment plants at Sundar Industrial Estate, which is the biggest in Punjab. They had no treatment plants. The entire affluents were being through the pit hole. They were being injected into the, uh, uh, in the ground and they were being mixed with the groundwater. So seven, three large and medium treatment plants have been ensured, they have been set up and the rest are in, in the pipeline. Uh, the Sundar Industrial Estate did not have a treatment plant. So we have uh, compelled the Sundar Industrial Estate to have a treatment plant of its own which is right now under construction. Likewise, this sugar industry, action was taken against the sugar industry. There are about uh, 15 sugar uh, mills in, in the Punjab. Four out of those sugar mills have already installed treatment plants. The others are in the process of uh, installing those treatment plants. And imagine the benefit that the population around them will be getting out of, because previously, their entire affluent, which was uh, consisting of arsenic, etc was being injected into the underground. So the underground water was being polluted uh, and you can imagine what was the, uh, the, the impact that it was creating on the people living in those areas. The, uh, I think, uh, a suggestion was made that uh, a lot of water is being wasted in the mosques while, you know, in the process of ablution. So we embarked upon the construction of ablution tanks. This is also a new concept. Currently, 193 ablution tanks have been constructed in different mosques in Lahore. 
The biggest one has been constructed in Data Darbar Mosque. I would invite any of you to go there and have a look. What happens is the, that the Parks and Horticulture uh, Authority, the lorries, they come there. They, you know, fill their tanks with their uh, water, and they, the entire, you see, uh, this Iqbal Park, which was the Mento Park, is now being irrigated by the water which uh, they uh, take from the ablution tank of Dada Darbar. Uh, 310 car washing cycling plants have been installed in the uh, 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 in the uh, uh, these. Uh, you must have seen the car washing for the purpose of car washing because the water was being wasted while the cars were being washed. The water was entire water was being wasted. Now they have car washing recycling plants, which means that the water is not being wasted and the same water is being recycled. Then uh, the tubes were being used to use the uh, underground water. The channels from the canal were at least 24 channels. They are irrigation channels. They were all closed. We have had 17 out of those 24 irrigation channels of Lahore Branch Canal, which remained choked for the past 35 years. They are now been opened. The irrigation department has compelled to do that. And the tube wells in the governor house, the HSN college, uh, in the uh, Lawrence Garden, they've all been shut down. Now the water from the uh, canals are being used to irrigate their lands. This is also one of the most significant steps that have been taken. Uh, the housing societies were not paying any aquifer charges. And VASA was completely uh, helpless in doing that. Through the intervention of the courts, the housing societies have been compelled to pay the aquifer charges. And VASA has been richer by about 2 billion rupees. And uh, those housing societies will now be, uh, in fact, this is another step. For the first time in Lahore, water meters will be installed uh, throughout Lahore. Because strangely, uh, we don't have water meters. So for residential purposes, commercial purposes, housing societies, they don't pay anything for the use of water, which is, in my opinion, criminal under these circumstances. So water meters will be installed. They'll be, the work will commence from December. And people will be compelled to uh, pay for the water that they are using. Then there are steps taken for rainwater harvesting. Uh, two uh, projects have been steered. If you notice this uh, uh, monsoon, it was always the case in monsoons that around Lawrence and Ma, uh, in this Mall Road, uh, wherever it rained, there was water, a lot of water used to accumulate. We've had uh, constructed a water tank, a huge water tank, under the Lawrence Garden. And this uh, monsoon, you must have noticed that there was no uh, water accumulation because all of that water goes and gets stored in those water tanks. They are taken out and the entire Lawrence Garden is being irrigated by those, the water. At least three other water tanks are being constructed in and around Lahore. Uh, as a result of the, uh, this, these steps which were taken by the, by the court, uh, a report was compiled about a year back by the uh, Directorate of Hydrology, VASA. And in that report, so, you know, it was a pleasantly surprising report for us. It was reported that the water level was lastly 50.150 meters in 2018. Since the initiation of these steps, the water till 2020 uh, uh, has not, the level has not gone down, which means that there has been no further depletion of groundwater in Lahore. And, uh, you know, since 2020, the water table has significantly come up. So that is, uh, I think, one of the significant achievements of this climate litigation that I'm just talking about. 27.125 uh, Q6, which is amounting to 1 crore 75 lakhs gallons of groundwater per day, is being saved uh, because of these measures, much more in cantonment as well. The second uh, uh, 
initiation was regarding uh, environment and smog. You must have noticed last December, because of the measures put in by this court, we had at the end of December at least two weeks of sunshine in Lahore, which we never experienced. That was because of, not many people know, the steps take, taken by this court regarding smog. Uh, previously, these uh, brick kilns, you know, they are scattered all over Punjab. They were being operated in the old, on the old technology. Because of the orders of this court, all of them had converted to zigzag technology. You must now, traveling on these roads, motorways, you must have noticed white smoke coming out of these brick kilns. That is because of the new technology now that has been installed because of the orders and directions of this court. This was a concerted effort over a period of two and a half years. Many, many other uh, you know, steps are taken. I hold a weekly meeting on Fridays and uh, directions are issued regularly on many subjects which I cannot encompass in this short time that I have. But uh, stubble burning is one of the, also one of the, you know, key uh, 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 elements which contributes to smog in Pakistan. It is a recent phenomena. It has been exacerbated by the other uh, uh, climate uh, elements brought forth by the climate change. You know that stubble burning takes place during this season throughout Punjab. Uh, the Chief Secretary has been asked to hold weekly meetings. The Deputy Commissioners have been sensitized. These stubble burnings are, uh, we, we, we make use of the NASA uh, satellite imageries as, as well as the uh, imageries from other. And we have real time, our commission, has real-time uh, uh, knowledge of where the stubble burning is taking place so that we can take action. And you will uh, notice a significant reduction in the smog because the stubble burning has been controlled. Uh, anyone indulging in stubble burning is now being imposed with a fine of 200,000 rupees. Another significant step, and people living in Lahore must have noticed that there is significant reduction in the use of plastic bags. That was also the, one of the directions issued by this court. At least the large stores and many stores, uh, pharmaceuticals and others, they, ha they have disused plastic bags. And you would s noticed uh, uh, other bags which are more environmentally friendly, paper bags. This was also one of the directions issued by this court and uh, we are expanding it to the other uh, uh, districts of Punjab. I would, uh, lastly, uh, wrapping, as I said, there's so much other things that are happening. And this, I say, is the small little contribution that uh, I'm trying to make uh, to bring about, uh, you know, uh, meaningful changes. We all can, uh, wherever we are, you know, people can make their change. But I would lastly refer to two steps further that we've taken, heat. The, to control heat, we've, uh, we've uh, asked LDA to impose restrictions. They have uh, uh, compiled uh, regulations as well. Uh, rooftop gardening and solar paneling, that is what is being uh, done throughout Lahore, which will control significantly the heat because heat now is one of the major factors which will have an impact on uh, cities because of the urbanization and the infrastructure development that we have. Lastly, I'll refer to the Ruda case, the case. It's famously called the Ruda case. There's an urban development that the government wants to set up at the bed where Ravi no more flows. And uh, in that judgment, I've held two things, uh, amongst others. One, that uh, our national security now is nothing else but food security. So food security is the new name of national security. So, the, so please stop acqu acquiring agricultural land. So I have also in that judgment uh, struck down uh, the old colonial law of acquisition where there was, you know, they, there was uh, the acquisition of agricultural land was rampant for, you know, setting up infrastructure uh, uh, projects and housing societies. And I have held in that uh, judgment 
that we cannot uh, acquire agricultural land and I've struck down the relevant provisions. Uh, that judgment is before the Supreme Court now. Let's hope the Supreme Court you know, agrees with that judgment for the sake of the future of this country and our people because we need to stop acquiring agricultural land and setting up all those uh, housing societies. L lastly, just I would like to introduce uh, the members of the commission, Hina, Fizullah, and Kamal, who are sitting there. They are at the vanguard of this campaign, and they are members of the commission. And I tell you, they have faced life threats because of the actions that they have uh, taken on the direction of this court. They are doing great work, and I uh, give them a uh, hand up. Big hand, please. Thank you so much. Thank you.